Hi, I'm Joe, and you're in Joe's Kitchen. Welcome, one and all. Uh, we've got a great dish for you today. It's a traditional German dish. I think you'll really like it. Uh, my mom used to make this dish when we were growing up, and us kids and dad, we all just loved it. And so I thought this would be a good dish to go ahead and try to put together, uh, bring back those old family memories. We're going to do a little different than mom did it. Uh, we're going to do it the more traditional German way. Uh, anyhow, I, I really think you'll like it. I think you really should try to do it. If you like it, hit like, share, and subscribe. Without further ado, lass uns anfangen, or let's get to it. We're gonna eat, we're gonna eat. We're gonna eat, 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 and eat. We're gonna eat, eat, and eat. We're gonna eat, 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 and eat. Welcome to Joe's Kitchen, yeah, we're gonna eat. That's right! We're gonna eat, 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 and eat. 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 Welcome to Joe's Kitchen, yeah, we're gonna eat. Oh yeah! All right, we're back in Joe's kitchen and we are preparing that traditional German dish. And that dish is gonna be beef roulanden. Yes, mom used to make this and she's doing it a little differently. Uh, she didn't really um, do it the traditional way and I'll kind of explain the differences as we go along. But anyways, I'm gonna introduce you to the ingredients. People, here's the ingredients. <laughs> you know, um, the main staple item is gonna to be top sirloin. And you can get a, a, a round and just slice it. Uh, but ultimately, we're going to pound this uh, out nice and thin. Uh, we also have bacon. We're going to have pickles. I've chosen bread and butter pickles. You can choose whichever ones you like. We're going to have mustard. Again, you can use any kind of mustard you like. I've got Dijon here. Uh, onion or as Chef Pierre would say, onion. Um, and then other ingredients include things to make the gravy, which is gonna be beef stock, uh, a little cornstarch, we're gonna make a slurry to thicken it up, um, tomato paste, that goes in the gravy as well, a little water for the slurry. And we're gonna season the beef with a little smoked paprika and some salt, very simple. Uh, and of course, toothpicks. Now, most of the people, who do this will traditionally use baker's twine. I chose not to do that. Mom just used toothpicks. It made me, um, uh, may create some issues. We'll see how it goes. Uh, I'm going to be very careful with it. I think it will be great. Anyways, uh, first step is going to be to pound out the meat. So looking forward to doing that. Stay with us. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is pound out this sirloin or this top round. You know, you can use other uh, meats if you want. I mean, uh, but I think traditionally like a top round is what you use. Anyhow, so I've already pounded out three of these. We're doing four of our beef for Londons. And I got one more. I'm going to show you a little hack. Now, most people, when they pound out meat, they'll, they'll put cellophane underneath it and over top of it. Nothing wrong with that. It's actually probably better. Uh, we don't have cellophane, so I'm having to make do. Uh, <clears throat> if we were doing chicken, I'd be more concerned. Chicken splatters a lot more than beef. But uh, the hack on these a little baggie, a little sandwich bag. Put the mallet inside there. <clears throat> kind of hold it and then pound. So I'm going to try to get it a little thinner and wider. And I'm just simply pounding away. And I'm going to do both sides. And I, I want it pretty thin. Uh, but I don't want it so thin that it will tear, you know, so I'll put it the other side. Mm. 
and just kind of check it. Hitting more of the thicker parts. I think I'm pretty good there. So anyhow, the bag is a nice little hack. Kind of keeps things from getting all that food particles inside this and and uh, won't tear the meat as bad. Anyhow, we're going to now, I'm going to show you one and then I'll do the rest and then we'll come back. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take some seasoning, take a little salt. We're using Himalayan pink salt, just lightly. And I'm just doing one, I'm only doing it on one side. <clears throat> and then I take a little smoked paprika, just a light dusting, not very much. Like so. And then our mustard. Again, you can use any kind of mustard you'd like. I think a more robust mustard. I, we just happen to have the Dijon mustard. I may even go for like a more brown mustard. But anyhow, here we go. And I'm going to have the um, recipe in the description of this video. I may put some of it up on the screen too for you. A lot of this isn't really measured. You know, it's, it's I, I would call this maybe a tablespoon of mustard. And then I'm going to spread it across the knife, like so, like Mama used to do. You know, Mom and Dad were from Indiana, and there's a strong German influence in the Midwest. And, um, you know, they kind of settled into the area and started their farms. Most of my relatives uh, in that generation were farmers. All right, so I got the mustard laid out. <clears throat> Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put bacon. Some do it this way, some do it that way. I'm going to do it like Mom did it. Um, people say that if you do it this way, you may not get a piece of bacon in every bite, but I think I will. And use your judgment of how many, how much bacon you want to use. Some pieces are bigger than others, so you might want to use three. Um, but I think two is going to be good for that. And um, anyhow, I'm going to put this aside. Next ingredient is going to be onion. So I got to get a knife or Santaku knife, and I'm going to chop the bottom. Top. And we're just going to use one half of an onion, so I'll put that one away for another use. And a little bit of dirt on this, but you remember onions, like potatoes, come from the ground. So there's always going to be some dirt. If you do composting, you can use those ends for composting. Could even consider, um, I'm going to rinse this a little bit, get the dirt off of it. All right. With that cutting board, get a cleaner side, like so. Here we go. And I'm going to cut into slithers. Okay, and I'm going to take those slithers and cut them basically in half. Like so. You could dice it, you could do it however you want to do it. So anyhow, we're going to go back to the beef for London. And we're going to sprinkle it with onion. Actually, let's do the pickles first. I have pickles. So the main ingredients is sirloin, bacon, mustard, pickle, onion. We're going to come over here real quick, get our knife that we use with the onion. That'll be fine. Get a few pickles. I've got pre-sliced. You get a whole and just do it however you want to do it. These are bread and butter pickles. I love the flavor of them. I'm going to cut them again lengthwise and then cut them again like that. That way I can spread them across pretty good. I'm just going to sprinkle them on there like so. And that was about three slices, something like that. So you can adjust how much you put on there accordingly. And that's that. And then the onions. 
like so. Then you're going to fold in the sides and roll it from the thinner side first. I hope I make my mom proud. Probably got too much onion in there. Making adjustments as I go along, because this is the first time I've really ever done this. Go. I think my other ones will come out better. <laughs> you gotta wrap it like a, a wrap or a burrito, so um, I gotta watch how many ingredients I put in there. I always like to fill too many ingredients, I think, but anyhow, that's that. Then we're gonna come back and get a toothpick or two. And maybe I could have pounded these out a little bit better. Maybe I'll come back and pound the rest of them a little bit more. Uh, but I'm not going to have you guys watch all that. And I'm going to put a few toothpicks in there just to kind of hold it. Kind of going into the meat and coming out. And I'm going to do one here too. So, it's a rough first attempt, but I'll be honest with you, I, practice makes better. So, the next ones will probably look a lot better. All right, we're now going to braise or brown our beef for London. Um, just so you know, I rewrapped the first one, try to make it neater, and the other ones came out okay. I think the couple mistakes I'm making is I'm putting a little bit too much ingredients in, and I probably could have pounded them out thinner. In fact, I think if I'd uh, gotten the top round, sliced it just right, I, I could have presented a, a better uh, piece of meat that I could fold in. But I think I did all right. It would be hearty, let's just say. And we know the Germans like to eat hearty. Uh, anyways, we're going to braise these. So I'm going to pair tongs. I'm introducing two more ingredients, virgin olive oil and black pepper. The black pepper is going to go in the gravy once we get to that stage. Right now we're just going to brown these up. I do got toothpicks in them. Let's hope this works out all right. That's the sound we want to hear. There we go. And I'm going to pull all that olive oil around a little bit. Loosen the bottom so they don't stick. doing the first time and this is the live video of it and so you know practice makes better and uh, cooking is trial and error so all the mistakes I make today I'll improve on next time. So anyway, we're, we're going to get these nice and brown. We're not cooking them all the way. We're just going to get a brownness to them. Those are pretty big and fat uh, beef for London's. I think I'm going to, I thought I was going to eat two, but I think I'm just going to have one. Anyhow, we're going to keep browning these. We'll come back. Uh, then once they're brown, we're going to keep them in that same pan and create the gravy. And then they're going to go into the Dutch oven, into the oven at like 325, probably cook it close to an hour. All right. Stay, stay with us, okay? We're almost there. 
All right, so our um, beef alone is braising. We've got nice and brown. Oh, perfect timing. That means the oven's preheated. Gosh, I couldn't have that better. Anyhow, yeah, we're going to now add the remaining ingredients. So we'll start with the uh, beef broth. And this is Swanson's brand. It's a, a kind of a lower sodium brand. Got to watch my heart. <laughs> so this is going to be pretty... Uh, I'm not sure this is really heart healthy dish, but at least we're going to try to improve upon it. So I'm going to add enough of this broth. I shook up the uh, can first. And I'm going to add enough of that to probably almost add the whole thing. I want to get the beef or lining covered real well. So that's that. And <clears throat> You can see I've got a nice brown collar on the beef or London. And anyhow, we're going to now um, add a little tomato paste. I do about two tablespoons. And we're going to mix that in. And there we go. Let's mix in the ingredient of black pepper. I like a little black pepper to taste with my gravy. Okay. And then we're going to do a little slurry, a cornstarch slurry. We're going to do that as long as we take some fresh water, put it in a mixing bowl, and add. A teaspoon, a couple of teaspoons, let's say. I like a thick gravy, so hopefully this reduces down in the oven. There we go. I'm going to add that in, just like so. Kind of mix that up a little bit. And then it'll continue to mix as it kind of boils inside the oven. And that's going to make bring out the flavor, uh, hopefully reduce to where it's nice and thick gravy. And uh, anyhow, it's going to go in the oven for about an hour. I'll probably set the timer for 45 minutes, check it. Prior to that, I'll probably turn them for a time or two, just to make sure they're cooking evenly. And uh, yeah, this hopefully comes out good. Uh, it will come out as good as mom's. Now, the difference between mine and mom's version, or rather this traditional method, uh, this is not authentic, it's traditional. So authentic would be something even more authentic, like the way the actual dish uh, began. We're not doing that. Um, we're doing something that's kind of traditional. Uh, but mom actually didn't used to make the gravy like this. She would... Uh, the step that she would do is after she made the beef for Londons and, and toothpick them, she'd put them on a cooking tray and put them in the oven and broil them until done, basically. And then we'd eat them. I don't even think she made gravy to put on them. We probably had mashed potatoes and gravy with, with them. But um, anyhow, I think this will be really delicious. Looking forward to how this comes out. So we're going to take this. I'm going to need another pad. <coughs> Because this Dutch oven gets hot all the way around. And we're going to put it in this oven at 325 degrees. I'm going to set a timer for 45 minutes. And uh, yeah, if they imagine the time, you can come back and see how this comes out. been in the oven for well over an hour. I've ad actually added more time. Just kind of hold it out a few times, churn it, looking for the uh, stock to get thicker like gravy. 
And uh, I need a little help. I, I created a uh, roux. Uh, I melted some butter, mixed in some flour, and added it to the pot. <clears throat> Hopefully it gives a little thickness. So I do know that it's sitting in the um, uh, pot there, the Dutch oven. It's, it's all the condensation is just going back into the pot. And that's going to create, a little, it's going to be a little bit more wetter than I probably would want. But that steam is also going to tenderize the meat. So it sticks one way, half a dozen another. So anyway, we're going to take it out right now and um, see how it looks. It's hot! Oh, my glasses are fogging up. Feel like I'm in a Michigan lake in the rain season. And when you open up a pot like this, you want to open it to the back, not towards you, so the steam goes behind you. And we'll leave this here. Stir that gravy around a little bit. Gravy has a bit of a thickness to it, but it's a little bit thinner than I'd like it, but it's still, if you can see this. Remember, the grease from the bacon is, is pouring out into this dish. But all these flavors that are going to be molded together tomato, beef, onion, bacon, mustard. Alright, so we're going to take the beef from London. We'll put two on the plate over here. Remember, we have toothpicks. Well, we don't have a lot of string, we don't have any string. And then I'm going to take the um, onion ladle. This work. <laughs> A little of that gravy on top. Like so. Little cracked pepper. And I would have liked to have fresh parsley, but, well, this is what we have. The parsley. So now we're going to cut it and see what it looks like on the inside. Really need to pull that toothpick wherever it might be. There it is. We're in Florida, and you can probably hear the thunderstorm. There it is. The bee for London. How about that? That looks delicious or what? I'm going to have a little taste of it. Cheers. Mm. Tender, tasty. The taste of bacon, mustard, and onions just takes me back to when mom used to make. Oh. Love it. Beef for London.
And now, until we turn on the oven and fire up the grill and we cook again, y'all be safe and enjoy food. We're gonna eat, we're gonna eat. We're gonna eat, 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 and eat. We're gonna eat, eat, and eat. We're gonna eat, 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 and eat. Welcome to Joe's Kitchen, yeah, we're gonna eat. That's right.